Okay, I'm back for a brief second. No, not a lot of time has elapsed. It's been only five minutes, but you know what? I have such great subscribers. Um, my longtime viewer, Don, has had commented on, he's glad that my Pomeranian is doing a little bit better. It's going to be a day by day with her. Um, she's. I need to give her time to just recuperate, regroup, get some strength back, and I need to get some more weight on her because she had dropped four pounds in a two-year time frame. And for a dog, that may not sound like a lot of weight, but that's a lot of weight for a dog that only weighs 14 pounds. So she's down to 10. She has gained a couple of ounces since she was at the groomers. So we are taking care of her. Uh, the other thing is, is I had a great lady who has been a long time viewer. She's been viewing my videos since this summer. You might want to go check out her channel. And her channel is called Pre-Retirement Days. And she talks about food and stuff on her channel. Now, I'm going to be honest. I don't watch everybody's channels because I just don't have that much time in my life to do that. And the YouTube channels that I am more faithful to have nothing to do with cooking. But definitely go check her out. She has left such beautiful comments on my posts and stuff. And I enjoy conversing with you guys immensely. So if you haven't had a chance, go check out her channel. Become a subscriber to her channel. This is what the cooking community should be about. Is sharing recipes and just having a good time cooking. Now, not everybody does the same type of channel that I do. Her channel is probably very different from mine. The professional chef's channels are much different than everybody else's channel. But we're all here to, or because we share food in common. We're teaching us, or you're learning how to cook from me. You're learning different recipes. And again... Don't be afraid to leave me a comment down below on recipes that you may want to be featured on my YouTube channel. I am more than happy to do those. Now, like I said in an earlier segment, those probably aren't going to be done until next year because now we're getting into the holiday season and I have a lot of videos that I need to get done between now and, and uh, the, the new year for you guys. Uh, there's one particular lady that wants me to do a Polish um, hunter stew or a hunter dinner. And I looked at it and it very much intrigues me on doing it. And I will definitely get the ingredients. The problem is, is right now I probably have most of the ingredients in my freezer. It's just getting to them. But because they take so long to thaw out and because Thanksgiving is two weeks away... That'll be pushed till next year. And I promise I will definitely look at doing that. I'm going to look what goes into that. And we'll we'll go from there. There is also some more bread recipes that I want to teach you. But we're going to get into desserts. And that's a big part of your Christmas and Thanksgiving holiday. Is those yummy, yummy treats that you're going to be making for your friends, family, for yourselves, for those great meals that you're going to be serving around the holiday season. So we'll be getting into that. We're not doing that today. Today's the Friendsgiving. I'm trying to get a vi the videos recorded so you guys know what to do the week of Thanksgiving so that you guys are not pulling your hair out and going, oh my God, I have so much to do. Why did I put this to last minute? So, anyway... I had to turn up my, my stove just a smidge. It's still boiling, and it's not really boiling out. Now, you can let this go for at least hour, hour and a half, two hours. And then what you do is turn it off and just leave it alone. Leave it covered and turn it off and put it on the back of the burner. It'll stay nice and hot until you're ready to use it. Now, I still have 12 minutes to go before I need to baste the turkey again. I'm going to start doing the cabbage, so I will be back later on. If also you're a subscriber to my channel, 
leave your channels down below in the comments so other people can actually follow you guys. And I would be more than thrilled to have you guys post your channels down below. Maybe give a, a little bit of a description of what your channel is about so that people know what they're looking for. But definitely go check out my friend and uh, pre-retirement days channel because I bet you it's a hoot. And I'm going to have to, one of these days when I have a, a day to myself, I'll have to go check out her channel. So I'll be back later when we start to wrap up the turkey. Okay, I, all I'm back. I know this is a really, really, really long video. Um, I probably will be putting this over multiple days. Normally, I wait for my subscribers to post stuff and welcome them. I'm going to do a special shout out because I actually know my subscriber that just subscribed today. And that's Kristen. So, hello, Kristen. Welcome to my channel. I hope you stay. I've known Kristen for quite a few years ago. I know both of her, well, I know one of her sons, her other son. I don't know if we've actually met. But shout out to the, the Walos household because they're good friends of us. So it's almost three o'clock. The turkey has been in since 1130. So 12, one, two, 11, 13, 12, one, two. So it's been in almost three and a half hours and it is getting done. Um, my cabbage is on the back of the stove and it is fully cooked. It's just chilling out. I have it covered. You notice I have it covered and I have no flame on it right now. You don't need to put a flame on it because it will, trust me, it will stay hot. About half an hour before you're going to serve it, just put it on a low simmer and let it come up to a simmer point. Now, as for the um, giblets, I still have everything in here and this is starting to cool down just a little bit. So what I'm going to do is put that back on a minute and I'm just going to put that to a really low it doesn't really need to cook anymore, and I need to take the vegetables out. Of course, you're hearing the mouthpiece. He's starting because he knows something is going on today. I thought I'd show you my other good china. I, I did one uh, for our anniversary, and I showed you that. This is my grandmother's poppy seed, and it is probably older than I am. I don't know when the poppy seed pattern came out, but I remember this when I was really little, and I'm talking about four or five years old. I remember this this set of, of dinnerware, and it, it's probably my favorite, because this you can put in the dishwasher if you're, if you're careful with it, but I have such good memories of, of eating off of it. Of course, my husband's watching a football game downstairs, but I have all of the serving... Um, pieces on the uh, table right now and I have my turkey rack over here. Now the only thing I have left to do is to cut the potatoes and those take no time. I'm not going to peel them. About this time if you're going to be serving you might want to peel your potatoes. You can also do this a day ahead of time. You can easily if you have room in your refrigerator for the pot that you're going to cook your potatoes in Go ahead and peel and cut them the day before. Put them in the refrigerator. Just make sure before you put them on the stove top to change the water and put fresh water in. That'll actually get rid of a lot of the starch that your potatoes have, have uh, used. But I'm not going to be that fancy today. I'm just going to um, cut my potatoes and and boil them with the skins on it. That'll give a little bit different of a texture. So, I'll be back later. Of course, all of the dogs are barking. I'll see you a little bit later. Okay, I'm back. I've skimmed all of the vegetables out of the gravy, or what's gonna be made for gravy. You wanna discard these. You don't want any of these going back in into your giblet gravy. They were just used for flavor to uh, enhance the flavor of the um, of the gravy. 
And we're not going to be doing much with the uh, with the gravy, although I did just. We'll see if I can grab a paper towel. I need to get some parsley that just fell on the stove. Off. Oh, oh and that's hot, and that, but I was able to grab it, and I'm gonna grab that piece. Now, if you want to fully skim it, if you have a uh, another pot that you're not using, you can go ahead and do that. And make sure that everything's out. I'm going to leave everything in the pot right now because, like I said, it's way too early to start making the gravy. And it's fine if it stays in there. What you're going to want to do is, just before you make the gravy, chop up your giblets. You can remove the neck. You don't have to put the neck pieces in there or the, the neck meat in there. Um, what I do a lot of times is I'll actually chop that up and I'll, I'll give that as the... Uh, doggy um you know i can't say the word but you know what i mean for my dogs now i did not add any salt to this and you want to make sure if you're going to be giving your pets a uh t-r-e-a-t for dinner there are a few things that you want to remember one not to give your dogs any skin so they should have no skin of the turkey. That's really bad for them. Second of all, if you've injected it with butter and not garlic, as long as you have not put garlic on the turkey, it's okay to give your dogs a little white meat. And usually it's the breast meat. Stay away from the dark meat. Same with the neck. As long as you haven't salted anything in your your stock, it's okay to give them some of the meat from the neck neck bone. Just make sure you're not giving them any part of the bone. You're just giving them meat. So you want to make sure that the meat is off the bone. There are a few things also I'm going to talk about since we're talking about dogs. And since we are coming into the holiday season, dogs Anything with onion, avocado, or chocolate are the three big no-nos to dogs and cats. Those can kill your four-legged family members very, very quickly. So do not give them chocolate. Do not give them onions. Do not give them anything garlic. And no avocado. Those are, those are very fatal to dogs. Now... Good alternatives for dogs are breast meat. You can give them a little bit of breast meat. You can give them the neck as long as you, again, re have removed your your bones and you haven't salted them. You do not want to give your, your dogs sodium-rich foods because that also is not good for them. Let's talk about plants because I know a lot of people love the poinsettias and they are beautiful in the house. However, they're very toxic to both cats and dogs. So if you're thinking of bringing a poinsettia into your house, one, make sure it's out of reach of your dogs that your dogs cannot get to them. If you have cats, you need to be very careful where you put them and monitor that the cats are not chewing on any part of the poinsettia because that is fatal. The other thing that is fatal to dogs are lilies. They're also toxic to cats as well as, as dogs. So Easter lilies, more at Easter time, but sometimes you get these beautiful white lilies at Christmas time. And it's very tempting to bring these fragrant flowers into your house. But you're better off not bringing in those type of plants because you, again, don't want to hurt your four-legged family members. You want to cherish them as long as they're around. Tulips are also deadly to both dogs and cats, and it's because of the bulb that's in tulips. Now, you can bring in tulips if you put them in a vase and on your table. You can do that. Just monitor if you have cats that your cats are not getting into your flower vase and chewing on anything because you don't want to harm, harm them either. So that was just a quick little tidbit from me on how to keep your four-legged pets happy and healthy for the holiday season. 
Okay, I'm back. It's 3.30, so the turkey now has been in the oven for four hours. I'm going to kind of put you on this side. What I did is I strained my stock for my gravy from one pot to the other. And this is, is the giblets and the neck. So what I'm going to do is allow those to cool because they're still steaming hot and they're a little bit hard to handle right now. I'll be right back. I got to take this phone call.